the mean, if I scroll down to the pulse stats, the mean pulse is 67. That's a little high in my opinion. And I, I mean, it's in the normal range, don't get me wrong. But you know, like in your 60s, eh, it's okay. 50s is decent. 40s is, my gosh, you're in great shape. And assuming there's nothing else going on. And 30s is like you're an Olympian shape. So your wow. mean pulse of 67 is just a little bit higher, right? I don't know, do you work out, Ron? I do work out. I, I run every day and um, I haven't been lifting recently, um, but I used to, as of three or four weeks ago, would lift four or five days a week. So kind of disappointing on that. Could that, so does this just mean that I have 67 beats per minute? So I'm bumping at a, a higher rate? You're just, My, uh, it's, just it, it, it's fine. It's in the normal range. Absolutely no one will say that's abnormal. I'm just saying I read thousands of these a yeah. year, thousands, literally. <laughs> And could this be related to caffeine and nicotine use? Uh, it could be. Um, you know, I think the main thing is for every one, there's a recent study showing that for every one beat increase in your mean heart rate at night, there's like a 3% increase in stress during the day. So I think, you know, it's one of those parameters you want to look at is heart rate and heart rate variability. Um, if you look over to the right, your minimum pulse or pull a rate is... 48 and your maximum is 106. When you're awake, the range of your pulse is 60 to 100. You know, minimum 60, maximum 100. You know, you don't want to be over 100 when you're awake and you want to be below 60, roughly. And then during sleep, it's 40 to 90. Okay. So it makes sense that someone with sleep disordered breathing will be a little bit elevated. Okay. Um, but I don't think those numbers take into account what your baseline heart rate is. Does that make sense? And yeah. so if your baseline heart rate's a little bit higher, like for instance, 67, then um, maybe it's interesting. You, you want the pulse, like your maximum, you want the pulse to react to your sleep disorder breathing. So you want it to go up. If it doesn't, so, but that's not ideal if it goes up because it's also indicating that you're you know, in stress. But if it doesn't go up, that could mean that you have reduced heart rate variability. How does sleep disordered breathing affect pulse rate? Why would it affect pulse rate? Because the, the heart is working overtime to deliver oxygen to tissues? Well, I, I think when you have an apnea or hypopnea, how, how it's terminated is with an arousal. And that arousal uh, and, and enables the airway to open. But it's also a Time, and, and like I mentioned, the peripheral arterial tonometry through the watch pad is there's also a sympathetic arousal that occurs at the same time. So your heart rate goes up, your blood pressure goes up, and and the, it, it goes along with the cortical arousal. It's almost like a jolt. And depending on how severe the apnea is, you know, and, and how significant the arousal is, there's a small or large jolt, so to speak. So is, is that jolt essentially your body shaking you awake saying, hey, wake up, you're not breathing? Yeah, because like right now, you wouldn't have any respiratory events because you're awake. And so your body tries to recreate that wake-like state with these mini mic or arousals. The reality is you have these arousals that you have no idea that are occurring. And then, you know, not every, I always tell people, hey, uh, before you have a fire, you need a spark, but not every spark leads to a fire. Before you have an awakening, you need an arousal, but not every arousal leads to an awakening. But the most interesting thing is you don't remember necessarily every awakening. So in other words, you have to have an arousal. That arousal may or may not lead to an awakening, and you may or may not remember that particular awakening. And then furthermore, these awakenings disrupt sleep, to put it simply. They, they prevent you from entering certain stages of sleep for the appropriate amounts of time, and that's just unhealthy because we need to have sleep in a certain, you know, arrangement and for a certain amount of time in order for our brain to be normal. Is that, is that the idea? Yeah. Um, it, it takes, it's just like, um, having arousals is like speed bumps on a highway. You know, you want to get up to the proper speed, but you can't. And so it may knock you out of deep sleep. It may knock you out of REM sleep, uh, deep by meaning slow wave sleep, but it also may prevent you from getting into those stages.